trip to uh, Tennessee, going through airport after airport and plane after plane. And I'm telling you, uh, airports were packed, parking lots packed, and we were packed in like sardines on every flight. But uh, God really did some things. I don't have time to go into it this morning. But he was so faithful during this trip. Uh, didn't get home to about 1.30 Thursday morning, Wednesday night, however you want to say it. But I'm glad to be back home. I miss it. When I'm not here on Wednesday night church, there's something I just don't feel right. The, the, the week is just not complete. But yeah, I'm so glad to be back home. Thank you, Brother Clayton, for, for carrying the torch Wednesday night. And, uh, but did you come to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. I'm here to worship Him. I, uh, I just feel so blessed. I feel so blessed that, that, to be a part of this church. That just like yesterday morning, we had such a wonderful men's fellowship. And if you weren't here, you missed some good food and fellowship and a faith devotion. But uh, I just thank the Lord for, for men and women that love the Lord and that are here in one accord for one reason and one reason only, and that's to worship Him. Amen? Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come this morning. Lord, on the day that you have made, say thank you. Lord, that we have another day that we can express through our voice and our hearts our love and deep affection for you. Lord, we ask for the Spirit's anointing, for it is not praise unless it is done in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you that you are all knowing, you are all loving, and Lord, you know every need that is in this house and those wherever in the world that they are watching today. Lord, we ask you for favor. We ask you for blessings. But most importantly, Lord, we know that we are blessed because of our son Jesus and what he did at Calvary's cross. Father, take over. We ask for your spirit just to flood this house, meaning flood our hearts today, as we give you praise, all honor, and glory. And we all say this, your children, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Let's just worship the Lord this morning. Stand to your feet, clap your hands, and help us sing as we get started this morning. I'm ready to go home. How about you? Yeah. Well, I'm getting ready.
is empty. No more traffic.
Let's continue to worship. Let's let God have His way. Oh, 
Yeah.
sing that. Can I get you to stand if you're physically able? Either me or that door this morning, I don't care. Glory. 
the Old Testament book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, beginning at the very first verse. We're going to read down through the seventh verse. 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 1. Glory to God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Oh, can you imagine, church? Brother, Brother Fletcher was talking about Sister Peggy singing a few weeks ago, whatever it was. I can only imagine. I've got that in my heart right now, Sister Renee. Of what's going on in the Holy of Holies of heaven, the throne room of God. People standing around shouting and praising God, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Church, there ought to be a Holy Ghost fire going through you right now. If it's not, you better check your pulse and make sure you're alive. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning of the very first verse. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow you vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your son. And you shall pour out into all those vessels, and you shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more, and the oil stay. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debt, and you and your children live of the rest. And I want to use for a subject this morning, live of the rest. I'm going to say that again. It may not make sense to you now, the Lord will it in a few minutes it will. Live of the rest. Let's pray together. Father, I'm funny. I'm so unworthy to stand behind this same desk. Lord, we cannot preach, we cannot teach, we cannot learn, we cannot comprehend without inner spirit. I ask, Lord, for the spirit of the living God's anointing today on our hearts, on our ears, upon the inner soul, that we may comprehend, O oh God, what you want to tell your children today. I thank you, Lord, that we can worship you in many forms and in many ways. We thank you for this written, precious, golden word, the bread of life that we can open and grow in the grace and knowledge of thee. We ask, O oh Lord, touch us as we worship you through your word. We ask all these things in the name of all all names, names, the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen and amen. And amen. amen. <laughs> Lord and God, I'm just going to give my emotion this morning. But when the team began to sing about going home, I was so happy to get back home from traveling this week. I, Yes, it was a fruitful trip. I give God all the glory, honor, and praise for it. But it was good to get, get back home. It was good to be in church today, Brother Fletcher. But it doesn't compare. It's not even a pinprick. It's not one drop in the ocean compared to going home to Him. Yes, amen. amen. And when I begin to imagine that, I can't help myself. 
Because there will be no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow. No more. The Lord would say, at some point, I am going to make your enemies your footstool. It is a finished work that Christ has done on the cross. Yes, said amen, but we're still here in the flesh. We're still here in a sin-sick world. Our body is still decaying because of Adam's original sin. We know that. We have many needs. We are a fallen creation because of sin. But one day, one day, I don't know when, Sister Shirley, but one day, yeah. we're all going to walk into the portals of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be in His presence forevermore as the Spirit of the Lord begin to give us tongues and interpretation. He's coming back for His bride. Amen. He's coming back for a church that loves him. The true Philadelphia blood-bought church. Not one just because it says church on that name down there. It's one of them. It's got the Holy Ghost. The Bible talks about ten virgins. Five. They had their lamp. In other words, they had a name on the door. They might have even had a cross on top of the church. They may have instruments, and they may have 20,000 people in the building. But without the Holy Spirit, yeah. you're not born again. You cannot be born again without being born of the Spirit. I'm not talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about being born of the Spirit. It's what the oil typifies. It's a shadow and type of the Holy Spirit of this Dear ladies, dilemma. Yesterday, as I stated earlier, we had such a wonderful fellowship time. Brother Earl, as always, he brings a feast. Amen. I'm still paying for it today. <laughs> but it was delicious. Brother Clayton brought a word and Virtually all of us gave a testimony or brought something to the table to contribute. Brother Clayton made a statement about that the Holy Spirit laid on his heart to pose a question to all of us brethren men that were seated yesterday. I believe there was eight of us, if I remember right. I think it was eight. In any event, that number is not important. The question was regarding, I think we spoke on Wednesday night about two <coughs> testimonies. And that the Holy Spirit directed his question yesterday, because I believe all eight of us, or seven of us, however many the number was, are married. In other words, what would your spouse say about you in a testimony about you? In other words, the testimony you would give. Let's say if this is a judge up here in a courtroom, you notice in a courtroom, it seems like testimonies can be 180 degrees opposed. Have you ever noticed that? You've got the prosecution and you've got the defense. And they, you can even have two people see the same event and give you two different testimonies. Okay? But the Holy Spirit was asking a question for us to examine ourselves. I mean, I see a certain way, my spouse may see it a certain way. Does our behavior, whether it be male or female, does not matter, young or old, does it line up scripturally? Are we really growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is our daily walk becoming more like our Savior and Lord? And as he stated, nobody knows you better than the Lord except your spouse. The Lord knows you best than your spouse. The ones that your significant other that sees you the most. In the morning, in the afternoon, and at night time, 
begin to line up with the message that the Lord began to work with me on when I was out of town in Tennessee. And I thought about long and hard about behavior, lack thereof, affection, compassion, temper, the list goes on and on of sins that we could write out. Acts of sins. Okay? The Bible speaks of acts of sins. Yes, it wanted to identify acts of sins. That way, His creation, you and I, would understand what sin is. But that's not really what the Holy Spirit was trying to get across yesterday morning. We might have thought that, men, but that's not what He wanted. The question was given, only we can answer before the thrice Holy God. But the Holy Spirit did not give the solution yesterday, did He? Now, if you attend church on Wednesday night, you probably know a little bit about where I'm going with this. Because see, on Wednesday night, we go verse by verse by verse of the Word of God. And then we give the exegesis, meaning the explanation of said verse. And we have been dissecting, I mean microscopically almost, dissecting the book of Romans. The book of Romans is the, the, the Magna Carta of the book of God that tells you completely how to live for God. A to Z, it takes you through the Apostle's journey of saying this again and again and again. That I hate, that do I. I hate it, but I do it anyway. You may want to call it a bad habit if you wish. Better be careful because the Bible may label it sin. That I hate, that do I, Paul would say. He would go through a journey, and that's what the Holy Spirit was wanting to impress upon yesterday, and the Lord began to deal with me uh, uh, Yesterday afternoon and last night and this morning, I posed the question, my children must answer it before me, now I'm going to give them the solution to their problem. It is the same whether it's the Old Testament or the New. I'm going to show you an example real quick. You and I were just lifted up, weren't we, in praise? Come on. Can you feel something? Can you feel something? Alright. Number one. This is you and me. A vessel. See, she brought vessel suspension. Imagine this water being the Holy Spirit. In church, you see, if you come to receive, that means you're open to receive. Yesterday, every single man that sat down at these tables ate. Food. I think. Didn't everybody eat? Okay. Stuff for just as good. You can't eat with your mouth closed. Come on. Every man had to open their mouth so they could consume what the table had prepared. I'm going to say it again. It was good. Just like in church, in prayer, Your heart is closed. You're not going to receive right. I can't get nothing in here. Neither can God. But with it open. You see, when you leave church, you may be convicted. You may be filled with joy. You, there, there's a whole range of things depending upon our individual situation. Our walk with the Lord at that particular moment, brother, talk about perfection. And spiritual maturity. Are you in the will of God? So the Holy Spirit is speaking different things to each one of us, even through a particular song. I'm going to say 
it again, depending upon where you're at at that moment with your walk with the Lord. But you cannot deny this if you are open to receive what the Spirit desires to give you. When you leave here, you're going to be filled. Amen. Amen. Well, you're going to be filled. But the problem, brothers and sisters, Monday's coming. Monday's coming, isn't it? Yeah. Monday morning's coming. Brother spoke on this yesterday. And he said it exactly right. Yesterday morning he prayed. And he said, Lord, I need you more today than I did yesterday. Yesterday's manna, yesterday's blessings will not suffice. Yesterday's grace will not suffice. I need His grace, His mercy, the fresh manna from heaven today. Amen. I've got to have it a daily dose, a daily portion. Monday's coming. And all of a sudden, you and I are not looking to the Lord like we should. We're looking to the world, our spouses, our <laughs> children. You may have a busy schedule. I've got to go to work. I've got to make a living. I've got to go to school. I've got to. I've got, I've got this whole list of preacher I've got to do. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm a busy man too. He comes first. Amen. Because He is the one that puts the breath in your lungs to do that list of yours. Amen? Amen. But how easily we forget on Monday morning.
say, what can I do for you? That's what he's asking you. Amen, amen. What can I do for you? The Bible says in the book of James, we have not because we ask not. Or we ask amiss. That's where a lot of the problem is. We ask amiss. We either ask for something, God, talk about God's will, Father's will, that God knows is not healthy for us. But I'm going to get to God's will in a minute. But I'm going to show you something here. These holes are not going to go away as long as you and I are on this earth because you're being drained. Hear me today. You're still in this flesh. You're still exposed to the world, your flesh, and the devil. There's temptations and there are trials. There are testings that God allows to come upon His children. And it's not done to hurt. Doesn't reveal that, my friends, is typical of God's abundant supply. You cannot exhaust the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Come on. Amen. We're talking about Almighty God. You've been hit, you've been bruised, you've been hurt. Look at that. Look at that. It's open to receive what God wants to give you and look at it poured out. Oh, it's got a hole in the bottom of it. Yes, it does as you go through life. Getting hit. But look at it, church. When I take my hand away from it, look what happens. I get drained. But I put it back under the oil of a powerful supply, the oil of the Holy Spirit, and it overflows. It overflows. Praise the Lord. He will never, never turn down a heart that's open to Him. Amen. He will pour it out in buckets, church. But it's got to be done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the week long. You can't wait for a refilling, you see. I know situations are different. I cannot answer for an infinite God. I've studied this book backwards and forwards for years, and yet I've only scratched the surface of, of understanding all about God. He's my Lord, He is my Savior, but I am in the process of learning. And even after we're glorified, we're going to keep learning, brother Les. We're going to keep learning. But you spoke again, I'll say it for the third time, about the will of God. Let me tell you about the will of God real quick. You know you're in trouble when I bring two Bibles. <laughs> this comes from the book of 3 John. John would write his gospel. He would write Revelation. He would write these three small epistles. This is the Lord God Almighty speaking. The Holy Spirit. John would ink it, but I want this to sink into your heart today. What is the will of God for you? Third John. Verse 2. Beloved. He doesn't call sinners beloved. You hear me? Beloved, I love you. You're mine. You're my beloved. You're mine. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You say, well, preacher, why do some children die at young age? Why is there this and why is there that? Again, there's things I cannot totally answer other than this. Whatever God does is right. Amen. Number one, he's taking that child home to heaven. He sees through foreknowledge that child may not make it. I need to correct myself. God knows whether he'll he or she will make it or not. Again, he has foreknowledge. And his love will take that child home to him. Same way with parents at times. They may leave the 
this earth early, and also we can cause our own life to go shorter. You take the Lord's Supper unworthily, the Bible says you drink damnation unto you, not to your soul, but to your body. Don't you ever take the Lord's Supper unworthily? I'll cover that another day. Lord, begin to deal with me about my weight again on the trip. Son, have I not told you? I've lost 10 pounds. <laughs> it's hard. He was talking about testimonies and holding things back a little bit. And it was like I take one step forward, two steps back. But I went before the Lord again last night and I surrendered it to the cross of Christ. And I said, Lord, I can't do this. I was just honest before the Lord. Sister Brenda will love this. Lord, I love banana splits. <laughs>
to somebody. So I don't have to read too many verses. Well, you got your Bible? Turn to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, please. I'm going to have you read that in a minute after I read these verses. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. That's our Lord Jesus speaking through his word in a minute. Clayton, you got it? Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Hang on, I'm going to read these first. This comes from the book of Hebrews. I believe the Apostle Paul was the author of Hebrews, but it does not matter. It is Hebrews chapter 4, beginning at the ninth verse. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he, meaning you and I, who has entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own words. As God did from his. See, God rested on that seventh day, didn't he? Don't forget that. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even the dividing of the sunder of the soul and spirit in the joints and marrow. There is a rest, my brethren, for the child of God. Just like when you go home physically, well you should anyway, you can lay down in your bed and not rest. You can be tormented, can't you? You ever tossed and turned? You couldn't go to sleep? <clears throat> I won't rest. I'm tired. But you couldn't get it? Brother, please read. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart. And you shall find rest upon your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ is not only your answer for salvation, He's your only answer for daily sanctification. He's your only answer for daily life and living. When it comes, and life will come. I don't have to tell you that. Without Him, daily, that's what's going to happen. You know I'm telling the truth. It's going to train you. And all of a sudden you get to a point. He was talking about arguing and complaining and murmuring and all the discord. You're not going to be, you're not going to be able to display truly the fruit of the Spirit. Why? It's gone. He didn't leave you. As I showed earlier, there's a few drops left. But I can only give somebody what's in me. Come on. I can only give you what's in me. You see. The true me, the true you, the inner man. This thing is just skin. It's, a, it's nothing. It's a shell. The real you is inside. And that's what you give a hurting world. Whether it be your family. Somebody on the street. Our nation of the world, that's what you give this. But if you have nothing left but a few drops, you're holding on to those drops to sustain you. Because you shut the fountain of life off. You shut the fountain of life off. Amen. You sang such a beautiful song. Sometimes it takes a storm to get a hold of me. Words to that effect. Why does it do that? There's going to be storms, yes and amen. But why do they have to fester into hurricanes before we will open up and say, Oh God Almighty, help me? Amen. <clears throat> when He desires to bless you abundantly daily, Peter would say it. What was his desire? you may prosper even as your soul prospers. That includes 
financially. Every respect of life and living, He is a good God. Isn't He a wonderful God? Isn't He a blessing God? Then why don't we go to Him all the time? How do I approach God, preacher? How do I rest in Jesus Christ? How do I really rest when the storm has got my boat doing this? When I'm leaking, pastor, yes, I'm open in the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit's not going to pour anything into you without faith. You can read that Bible. You can pray. You can beat your head. You can pay the, the mortgage on this church. It's not going to give you victory. Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Yeah. Impossible. Did you hear me? Church, I, oh, we got to get this in our heart today. Impossible. When the Bible says impossible, the Bible means impossible. So you can do anything you want in your flesh. What did the Bible say? They ceased from their works. In other words, to try to live for God, to try to get victory in the family, in the finances, in your faith walk. In other words, it can't be done by those means. It can only be done by faith. And then the Holy Spirit, again, will begin to pour even through the vicissitudes of the pain of life that wants to suck things out of you inner man to weaken you. The Holy Spirit will begin to pour out a super abundance in you, church. What's that song? I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup is overflowing. Even in the midst of these trials and storms. He's the creator. He's the owner of all. He bought you. He sought you and he bought you with his precious blood. You're precious to and he desires to bless and bless, as Peter would tell us, that we prosper. But it's got to be done his way. And his way alone. The only currency that you can approach the throne room of God in your prayer, in your praise, in your reading of the word, in your walk, and in your talk is faith. Amen. You can't go to him in your own works or your good looks. You can't approach him with your wallet. You approach him by faith Amen. in Jesus Christ and what he did for you at Calvary's cross. Blood, blood, blood. That's why it says in Jesus' name. We don't pray in Jesus' name just to hear ourselves. We don't pray in our own name, do we? And yet we'll go to our own selves for things that we ought to go to Jesus for. Oh, I feel that. I feel that. Oh, that preached by itself right there. The Lord showed me this a long time ago. And it changed me. It changed my ministry. Yes, I'm still a work in progress. So don't think your pastor's up here saying, oh, look at me. Oh, I'm not. Look at my trophy. Oh, I'm not. I'm still in that potter's wheel just like you. But the Lord showed me something over a decade ago that began to change my life. It was a revelation in our old home as I was walking through the living room and it hit me spiritually like a lightning bolt. I do not labor to live for God. Some of you got eyes like that at me right now. You don't understand I do not labor to live for God. You say, preacher, you're sweating right now. Aren't you laboring? Yes, I am. <laughs> All these beautiful singers and musicians, they
you see. Your heart is open. You went before the Lord. Lord, I can't do this. Only you can. You saved me. You bought me. My faith is exclusively in you. And then the Spirit then can begin to flow. Like He desires to flow. Even when you're getting punched and kicked. Things hurt. You see. You get scared. You get nervous. There are things that come upon us in this life. But he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I'm holding on to his word completely and exclusively. My faith is in Jesus Christ, his shed blood for me. Because when heaven gave its best, it gave it all. Why? Think about this, church. I'm going to give you a silly, silly analogy for a minute. Have you ever bought a new car, took it home, in your driveway, you just paid a lot of money for it. Man, it's all nice and pretty. Look at this new car. And went in your toolbox, got a hammer, and started beating it. You think about that. You just bought a new car, Sister Angie, a few months ago. Keith, did you take a hammer to it? Some of you might take a hammer to you if you need it. <laughs> I'll stay out of that one. <laughs> but seriously, you moved into a new house, a new apartment. I don't like that. I'm just going to go down to Walmart and I'm going to go get 99 cent. Do they still make 99 cent can? Cheap. Anyway, it's $3.99 for whatever it is. <laughs> Not crying a lot. I'm talking about that really cheap stuff. Whatever that home choice is. <laughs> and so you just begin to paint all over it. Designs, graffiti all over it. I mean, you're defacing what you just invested in. Your hard-earned money. You think of God Almighty. He invested all of you. Come on. He invested everything in you. Don't you think He's going to take care of you? Glory to God. He invested all. Singers, musicians, can I get you? He gave it all on Calvary. But the effects, the power, the anointing, the leading, and the guiding is day by day. We sung, I don't know how many songs earlier about going home. About going home. At some point, we are going to step into the portals of glory. But right now, you and I are still pilgrims on a journey, aren't we? But along that path, on that journey, you think about this. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, y'all are about to go on a two-week vacation, aren't you? You're going to wear Yellowstone? Would you think of going to Yellowstone with no provision? I bet you that gas tank's going to be full. I bet you might have a dollar bill or two. You're going to need it along the way, aren't you? Because you're going to need to eat. You'll need to drink something. The Lord knows everything we need. He's not going to send you on this journey unequipped. He's not going to let you run dry unless you decide. You close the cap. I've got this. You may not knowingly do it, church. Hear me today. I have counseled too many people. And after I got, they talk about this sin and this sin, and my husband does this and my wife does this, yada, 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 yada. Give me finances, give me this, give me that, give me a whole host of things that I've talked to people about over the years. Legitimately, I'm not saying they're making it up. These are legitimate things that they're, they're telling me. And I always take them back. There's one answer. He was asking the question yesterday, and I'm giving you the solution. Jesus Christ and what He did for you at Calvary. That's it. There is no other solution because I must have the Spirit. I've got to have the Spirit of the Lord all the time. And Jesus said the Spirit will not even speak of Himself. But will point all men Sometimes we're not careful of spending costs this week and get the cart before the horse. 
You see, that's one of the things that killed Azusa Street. They started going to what they call a Christless Pentecost. Christ went to the cross. Oh, save me. Ready? Hallelujah. Promise the Father fell. Glory, hallelujah, I'm speaking in tongues. I love that. The Spirit of the Lord was in this house or is in this house. You saw two examples of it. Actually, three or four more than that. But two of tongues and interpretation. The Spirit of the Lord's here. Why? Because He's lifted up right there. Jesus Christ is lifted up. He's Lord and Savior. He's the one I look to. And then, the Spirit begins to bless that. You see, because Jesus is the one that paid that price at Calvary for you and I. Again, He sought me and He bought me. And my faith is in Him and that finished work. And I don't believe it. The Lord showed me that years ago. Years ago. Because I kept trying to labor for a reward. You see, many Christians can do that. Well, if I... I used to pray 10 minutes. So I guess I've got to pray 20 now. Pray and bless you. Pray without ceasing. Yes and amen. But my victory is my faith in the one you see, that fulfilled the law, paid the debt. In other words, he paid my penalty. That debt that I owe that I'll never be able to pay, neither can you. He paid the penalty, but glory to God, it's like that song, The Double Cure. He broke the power of it. He broke the power of the sin. So we open ourselves up to him and what he did at Calvary's cross, allowing the Holy Spirit uninterrupted flow into our heart and life. And then allow the Spirit to lead you into the Father's will you're talking about. That's the Father's will. He wants to bless His children. He doesn't want turmoil and strife that, that, that shortens your life. Life's short enough, brothers and sisters. And this dear sister here is long, and we'll say it again as I get ready to close. Every vessel she took, the Spirit was flowing with it. But as soon as she quit bringing vessels, the oil stayed. It, that was it. The Bible tells us here, very clearly. Yeah, I've got glasses somewhere. Where's my eyes? I can't wait till I get home to glory won't be these. Title of a message, Live of the Rest. Meaning, you cannot, I'm going to say it for the last time, you cannot exhaust the power, the anointing, and the love, and the provision of God in your life. And if you will rest, as Jesus said, rest in me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. I. He didn't say you, me, your brother, your sister, your children. If you're not careful, they cause you pain. <laughs> you love them, but they cause you pain. We know this world's going to cause you pain. Jesus said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. And I think the Lord is enough. Don't you? Amen. I think what he did at Calvary's cross is enough. So whatever it is in your life today, the strain of you. Number one, he wants to stop some of that. Only the Spirit can do it. Only he, the Spirit can do it. He knows your need. Those of you at home, he knows your need. He wants you to give it to him. Let him, you see, patch the vessel. But you go to him daily, meaning, I'm an empty vessel. Fill me up, Lord. I can't get through the day. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's going to look like. And I'm an empty shell with just a few drops left. But if you go to the Lord every day, he will fill you and sustain you by faith. If you'll go to him, whatever it is, you go before.
before the Lord this very hour. There may be needs in your home, needs in the family, needs in your work, all the above. I don't know what your need is specifically unless you've told me. But He knows. And He's the only one who can fix it. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. Lord, we thank you for the rest that thy son Jesus has provided. It does provide for your children on a daily basis if we will only open our hearts, open ourselves up, Lord, and let you fill us. Lord, we bring ourselves before you right now. We open up our hearts before you at this very moment, Lord. We ask, Lord, fill us. Fill us, O oh God. You know the need, Lord. We bring those needs before you. And Lord, we place as the dear lady, she was a sinner. <laughs> Jesus walked into the house of the or the Pharisee. She was a sinner. They didn't want her there, but Jesus did. She brought an alabaster box of ointment. She broke it. She anointed Jesus. And she washed his feet with her tears in her hair. Lord, we bring it all to your feet right now. We have no pride. We have nothing. We have no glory. All of our glory is in you. And we bring those needs, whatever it may to the feet of Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Take it to Him right now in your own way. Take it to the Lord right now. Take it to the feet of Jesus. Take your alabaster box, whatever it may be, and break it. Break it at the feet of the Lord. Take your tears and your hair. You see, the hair to a woman, the Bible says, is her glory. She didn't care about nothing. She wiped his feet with her hair and her tears. And Jesus saved her. In the midst of these religious men, these prideful men, she humbled herself before the Lord. He's all I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. Take it to him right now. Hallelujah.
open to you, Lord. Fill me today. My faith is in you, thy precious blood. What you did for me at Calvary, I need a fresh touch of the Spirit today. And he will fill you today. You remember that tomorrow on Monday. You remember it every single morning. Lord, I've got to have you more than I did yesterday. Amen. Those of you at home, depending upon where in the world you live, I know conditions vary greatly. They, they vary greatly in our nation. But I know this, our God is faithful, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Pakistan or the USA, He is faithful. The Bible says, I will supply all your needs according to His glory and riches by Christ Jesus. So that doesn't matter whether you're young or old, black, white, brown, yellow, red, does not matter. Is the bottle of your heart open to receive the Spirit's flow because your faith is in the 